It was flour flavored, fl flour flavored gravy. Inside the whale's brain, there's this juice that makes humans live forever. Uh, like, In the first five minutes, shit. oh, oh, just wait. Anybody, anybody else see the movie event of the year? I did. Uh, yeah, I, I saw Skinnamarink on Friday. It was really neat. It was weird. I think he's talking about um the Puss in Boots movie. Oh, oh shit! I'm sorry, man. Yeah, no, I haven't really seen good. the Puss in Boots movie. I've heard it's really good. Uh, you know, I've actually also heard that the Puss in Boots movie is really good. Like annoying. Um, like I'm annoyed that it's getting like really good reviews. I'm like, why don't please? But is it annoying? It's a DreamWorks movie. Okay, Let it have good reviews. Like, I don't like Shrek. <laughs> you don't have to like Shrek. I, which I think is actually the, going to be the thing that's going to make me go go watch it is because it's not a Shrek. Movie. Yeah, it's like a side story. Uh -huh. You don't like you don't like any Shrek. No, I, I really don't like Shrek. Like you just don't think it's good. I just don't think it's funny. I don't I re just generally speaking, don't enjoy it. It's not like I think part of it is also I didn't grow up with it at all. Like at all. Like Shrek was not allowed in my house growing up because of course not. Of uh, course not yeah. So I don't have any childhood attachment to it. The first time I saw a Shrek movie was like at the age of like 19. Mm. and i, I think just... they were like really good movies for what they are when they came out i, I think it was a, a nice like subversive exactly. prince and princess story in 2001 when that wasn't like when subverting expectations wasn't the most annoying and boring thing you could do i think that's fair and i think that it's a it's one of those things of like i think it's one of those things where w it, it matters in the turn in the sense of like it kind of allowed other things to build on that kind of idea yeah but... also nothing is less funny than shrek memes that is true too. Like, oh my too. god, shut up, people. He doesn't Jesus. even like Shrek memes. Um, Shrek is love, Shrek is life. Oh. Wow, dude. Hmm. It's 2023. I remember that from when I was in I was, 10th I grade. Honest, Jesus. I can't tell you the last time I saw Shrek is love, Shrek is life. Like No, like anything in that in that vein. I, the only thing I get from Shrek memes at this point is now and again you'll get an all-star. Which, you know what? It doesn't bother me. All-star is a fun song. It was uh, an all-time classic. A certified hood classic. Exactly. If you will. Uh, so, this is a certified hood classic. Uh, anyway, the movie event of the year. Yeah, movie event of the year. So here, here's my my be all end all take. Like this is kind of like my end of the overall discussion take on Avatar mm -hmm, Two: mm -hmm, The mm -hmm. Way of Water. Go for it. Um, first of all, guess how many times they said the Way of Water in the movie? Three. About eight. Yikes. Um, eight. Eight. Yikes. Okay. It's eight too yeah, many. Yeah. Well, and they, they even use it in like the climax, like very end of the movie again. Gross. And it's not the first time they use it. It sucks. Disgusting. Um, <clears throat> my take on Avatar: The Way of Water is that if you watch it and you take anything away from it as a positive, other than maybe some of the atmosphere was cool, that's okay. But you need to look inside yourself and realize that you're stupid. <laughs> I've heard. Uh, and that's all right. You're allowed to be stupid. But that's what's going on. I heard that the CG was pretty fun. I heard that whatever the creatures and shit that they had in it were really good. But that's about it. I don't I personally think they were no better than the first one. And it's been long enough that, they that it's got to yeah. be better than the first one. Yeah, that's fair. Like it, it was no better than the average Disney movie that comes out. That's mostly CG. Like it's the same quality, which is to say like passable and fine, but not exciting anymore. Yeah. 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 And yeah, that's my uh, that's my take is that if you watched it and you were like, this is a really good movie. I think that you're not a bad person. But you're stupid. Sure. Because the whole premise of the movie is that James Cameron spent years inventing a culture so that he could have a white U.S. Marine come in and take it over. <laughs> See, and I'm, I am not No, that kidding. is 100% correct. That is what it is. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that happened in the first one. Mm -hmm. In the second one, it's way worse. And it's way more apparent. Yikes. Like. It's a satire. It's, or something. No, it's just no, 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 he doesn't it's understand. No, he doesn't. He's never said given the, satire. He said it was commentary. Especially given the you things guys, that he says. There it is. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I, no, I knew it was a joke. I just was like, I'm not giving him even the credit to joke about how much this guy Valid. sucks ass. Because <laughs> given the things that he said, especially about indigenous people, it's so apparent that this guy's like, wouldn't it be badass if like a U.S. Marine showed up and saved the Native Americans by showing them how to not be little idiot bitches like a U.S. Marine would do? Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's the plot <laughs> that of the movie. That's so real. That's exactly and there what is. A is. Movie, but the, the problem is the entire time the movie presents itself as if he, he this man has come to this like foreign culture and has tried to understand it and uh, make himself one with the culture and assimilate. No, he fucking has it. Not for a goddamn second. There's literally a moment in the first movie. I guess this is a spoiler for Avatar 1 and Avatar 2, which I would heavily recommend you don't watch. Yeah. Like, I genuinely think don't watch it. Like, 
You're no, wasting it's your not, time. It's literally quite You're giving literally money not worth. to someone who does not deserve it at this point and has actively shown that. And it fucking sucks. Um, but th- there's a plot in the first point, in the first movie, where, like, his, the main character's wife, her dad is, like, the leader of the people, and he dies. Because the humans, like, hit him in the head with a rock or something. Um, and he's like, my daughter, like, here's my, my bow. It's really, like, important to our people. It's an artifact, and I need you to take it and take kind of the helm and protect the people of the forest. That's, like, w- part of the ending of the movie, right Mm -hmm. within the first hour of the second movie um the main character is like we gotta leave the forest and she's like hey by the way my dad who was the leader of the village died and he told me that my his last dying wish was don't like protect the people here and the main character's like "Mm, yeah but this time protecting means leaving it doesn't it made no sense and in fact the entire plot of the movie didn't really make a lot of sense i've heard that which is bat shit and the visuals were fine when no one was talking. The mm. ADR and like the, the vocal like enhancements combined with like the CG lip dubbing they had to do, it sounded ass. The dialogue was bad. Like it not only was it bad in terms of it didn't make sense, it was bad looking. I read somewhere that maybe it was for the second one, might have been for the first one, that Cameron hired a like a shitload of artists and like linguistics to make an entire soundtrack for the movie in like like that oh, I have some great in. news for you about that, that. No, no, I was going to say that didn't sound like like earth, right? Like it was supposed to like so that it was intended to be like a very diegetic like this is what these people listen to. And then they fucking scrapped it and replaced it with action movie soundtrack number 3. Yeah, um the the, the problem is literally like the the they clearly weren't in the environments that they were speaking in because the whole thing was filmed in like a studio which mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. part no, of a lot of movies these days but they did a very bad job of making it sound realistic in the background mm-hmm. and like the people were in the spaces that they were in that makes sense. like it clearly sounded like two actors in vocal booths that weren't in the same room and recording lines separately that were then dubbed over the same actors faces talking at like a just ever so slightly different speed and then made to sound as if they were underwater or in the jungle when they weren't mm. it's and it's bad like it's just straight up not good filmmaking yeah i mean it's almost like it's a, listen i'm gonna make a claim here i don't i don't know that i've ever seen a james cameron movie i'm like damn i can't believe james cameron is such a no, great james director. cameron makes movies for the lowest common denominator of people when it comes to media literacy yeah. but so does disney so well, it's sure, like oh wow but, but at least disney is watchable wasn't james I mean, cameron the one that butchered the new star wars isn't that what? his fault james cameron yeah was he the new no. star wars yeah, he was. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't think he was. I don't think hmm. he actually was. I thought that was a bit. No, wasn't Sorry. that like, weren't people mad? That was at, Abrams. Um, that was JJ. Oh, yeah. Jerry, whatever. I don't Which like either I, of them. I don't hate JJ as a creator because Jay- here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's my thing. Here's my actual take. I think JJ is aware that he is making the lowest common denominator and there's a joy in that. I don't have a problem with I really want to make a movie where two giant robots beat the shit out of each other. That's, That's it. That's the movie. Are you Wait, talking about Pacific Rim? He didn't make Pacific JJ? Rim for you. Yeah, I know he didn't make Pacific Rim. That's why I was asking. <laughs> didn't JJ do all the Transformers movies? No, Are you that was fucking Michael Bay. Michael Bay, dude. Oh That's Michael God. Bay's I'm... only claim to fame. Oh, listen, in I... like the common man. <laughs> Fair. Uh, what, else? what has JJ done? I don't even remember. Lost season one and maybe two. Gross. Hey, the shut the fuck up. St- you asked. <laughs> no, he did the new Star Trek. I thought Those he, were fine. Why did I think, I think he did? What did I thinking of? Yeah, he did Mission Impossible. He does like very, he does very low common denominator movies, but I don't, at least when I'm looking at J.J. Abrams' work, right? I'm looking at fucking Star Star Trek. I'm looking at the new Cloverfields. May, and may, Noah, you might know better than I do, because you, I assume, have seen all of them. I have seen just the one. Uh, <laughs> I've seen keep two. it like that for, for a, maybe watch 10 Cloverfield Lane. Yeah. I think that's the really one I saw, to, yeah. If you're really that's trying the, to chill out. That's the that one I think really I saw. Good. That one's, uh, yeah, I think that one's maybe that's the actually best. Fun, fun little factoid. That's directed by, um, or partially directed by a Temple grad. A hmm. Temple University represent. James uh, Cameron. Yeah. No, Dan Trackenberg. J.J. Abrams. Yes. Uh, yeah, Avatar 2 was not good. But my point is, I, I don't think that J.J. like thinks of himself as like a high artist. At least that's never the energy I've gotten from like seeing his like um, interviews and shit. Is I think yeah, he, he knows he's just but, doing like blockbuster cinema and that's fine. Yeah. That's great. Mm-hmm. Well, that's why I wasn't beefing with him. Exactly. And then you look at James Cameron, and I feel like James Cameron has this big, like, I am a true he artist. Sucks, yeah. Uh, everything I do has purpose and meaning, and it's just not good. Yeah, like, James Cameron, up. you know, he went, he dug up the Titanic, he made a movie about the Titanic. Yes, correct. Yeah, I, and like, I respect his this... commitment to the bit when he does shit like that, right? 
Mm-hmm. But this movie was just garbage, though, because it didn't do anything right. And yeah. like Dan was saying earlier, they literally built through linguistic specialists an entire ass language for the people for the Navi. Mm-hmm. And I like in the first five that minutes, shit. Oh, oh, just wait. In the first five fucking minutes of the movie, <laughs> the main character says, I've been learning their ways and their culture. I've been learning their language. This is all in like the Navi native's tongue. And he says, I've learned so much of it. It almost sounds like English to me. And you'll no. never guess what happens after no that. No way. You'll never fucking guess that. And Bruh. people think it's good. Bruh. People think that's fine. That's the biggest pile of dog shit I've ever seen Holy in my life. Shit, Why couldn't bad. they just have the... See, because I would respect fucking stupid. <laughs> I would respect the shit out of this movie <laughs> if it actually committed to the made-up language that they made for it, and they did it the that whole they made movie. For it. Mm-hmm. It's almost like they never wanted to actually display any elements of indigenous culture that could have been cool on an alien planet. They instead just wanted to make facsimiles of Earth's indigenous cultures to have a white guy who was literally in the U.S. Marines come in and take over. Which is insane because I get it if like I get it if like the Navi have different tribes and like different like differences between the tribes. And I think that can be a really sick premise. And I think they don't even have to mimic indigenous groups from Earth. I think you can make this really cool ecosystem. And they clearly spent years designing all this shit Mm -hmm. only to then have. By the way, there's a half hour long scene in the movie in which slowly you watch a group of people who are really not in the film outside of this one scene, which is half an hour long, slowly kill a whale that the entire time they talk about how the whale is actually more intelligent and empathetic than humans. <laughs> and that is not really a part of the plot, except for the fact that then they, then they get... Oh, here's the kicker. Mm-hmm. They kill this whale over the course of half an hour on screen, mm-hmm. slowly on screen the whole time. They made up a whale just to fucking kill it on screen. And uh, for half an hour of the three hour movie... And then they get inside the whale, and he's like, inside the whale's brain, there's this juice that makes humans live forever. That's part of the movie. That's a part of the movie. Why? That's Why? a part of the movie. They go Why? in, no, yeah, yeah, they kill a whale for half an hour, they go inside of his brain, they get juice out of it, and they say, by the way, this juice makes humans live forever. Does that come up later? No. No. Except for the fact that they want to kill the whales for money, because they can sell it for a lot of money. Well, that's cool, but you're talking people live forever now? And that wasn't talked about in the first movie? That, that does feel like, see, it, here, that feels like it's a thing that, like, you almost like it's the bare bones like there's almost a story there except for the fact that it's what about the white man coming in and saving everything like i i kind of love the idea of oh yeah there's a fucking weird whale and it's got fucking brain juice that makes people live forever and now they're fu- the fucking marines are here and they're gonna ruin everything that's uh-huh. great but do you remember did you see the first movie by chance uh i watched because the plot of, of the first movie the is thing. that there's this really expensive rock under the specialist really, tree, really unobtained. And unobtained, so, the human, yeah. so the humans have to come in to get the specialist rock. And now this time they're not like the main it's character. Like, I'm going to the ocean instead to be part of the ocean people um, because I hate my wife and don't respect her or her culture. And that's how much I respect the culture. Um, anyway, it's pretty cool. But I'm glad pretty, to see that even great. in the future and even on a different planet and even in a different body. U.S. Marines still fucking bad to their wives. So <laughs> some things don't change. And uh, yeah, then they get the, the the humans stop going after the unobtainium, I guess, because that's why they left the forest, because they weren't in danger anymore, even though I don't know why that would be, because it's all still there. And you never really get to see the aftermath. Oh, he's got four kids now, and they don't really talk about that too much, except for using them as story devices. Just like the real then, Marines. Yeah, then there's a secret brain juice inside whales now, so the humans aren't even worried about the forest. They're actually going to the new place conveniently right next to where the main character is set up. And now instead of being in the position where he's like, we need to get away from the humans because we're the danger. We need to, like, not protect your uh, native tribe, my wife. Instead, they're like, we have to protect the water tribe. Now, why? Why? You didn't have to in the forest tribe. You just left. So, like, this time you gotta... You don't even know these people. You've been here for 25 minutes because they don't get there till halfway through the three-hour-long movie. And then after that, they spend half an hour killing a whale on screen and none of the main characters are involved. Except for the bad guy from the first movie who no one gave a shit about. Because he's here forever now. <laughs> it's so cursed. So, when I say that if you watch that movie and you thought anything other than maybe the visuals were cool sometimes, you're fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. It, listen. Like, I... I, I if you think it's a cool story, if you think it's a great story, that's allowed. You're just dumb. Yeah. No, that's kind of the, that's exactly. Listen, I. And you also probably should like look at like what's happened to centuries, millennia worth of indigenous cultures on our planet, and maybe like 
see that the way that James Cameron is behaving is really strangely ignorant, even though he made up the goddamn planet. Imagine. He made up a culture just to be racist to it. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. Imagine. James Cameron spent a decade of his life inventing a new kind of racism that only he could do. Well, because then because that way he could get away with it, obviously. Yeah. And I think that is almost commendable. <laughs> He's like, I, think the I, fact that he, I refuse to be racist to mm. real people. So I've got to. No, he is. Well, then I'll, you know, I refuse to let myself be seen as racist to real people. So instead, instead, I'm going to be racist to these not real people. Uh, well, he, he did say about the movie that like it made him think like, what if this happened to like, what if this is what happened with Native Americans instead of what actually happened? No, no, no yo, he did say that. That was oh, like why. That was, yeah. And there's also like next to no indigenous people in the actual movie itself, which, again, if they're going with a fully alien society that isn't heavily borrowing, it actually, I suppose that would be totally passable, especially because the main character is a transplant. It, I was going to say, I actually think that like if if you're doing a movie that's intended to not just be a one to one of a, an indigenous society, even if it's inspired by and then only cast indigenous actors, that's actually worse I don't know if it's actually worse. It's I think bad. that it's a little strange, but I also think that it's important because if you have those people on set and you have those people around, you have That's more true. voices that are part of That's that culture true. that are more likely to be like, hey, hold up. Whereas I don't think that uh, what's Tom Cruise's ex-wife, Kate? Who cares? Uh, I don't know who anybody was in the goddamn movie because you can't see them. <laughs> There's mm-hmm. blue. Yeah. I don't fucking know who these people are. I hate that shit. I hate this shit more than anything. I, this is worse than Jungle Cruise. Damn. And it took a goddamn decade. <laughs> yeah. Damn, that's unreasonable. I love that so much because there's so many like comments from people in the movie that were like, yeah, I thought it came out and bombed. I never heard about it because it's been so long since they did the movie. It is not. Not only is it not worth a wait. First of all, I don't think there's a way that it could have been worth a wait given Avatar exists. Uh, it was pretty funny in the last half hour of this movie, much like the first the last half hour of the first Avatar was very funny because it's just like a whole bunch of humans in ships getting. You can tell the only studio given direction was no blood because <laughs> God, do they brutalize these humans God, like you can you can tell the only rule was no blood because there'll be like two creatures that will like split a guy down the middle one leg each and just eat half of his body but you don't see the blood because it happens really really fast oh <laughs> and, my you're God. Like, and they'll just like crush somebody under a shipping container they'll just be a whale that just like eats 40 people whole and they'll just be like a ton of arrows just going right through somebody's skull but there's just no blood and you can tell that's the only direction they were given what an insane <laughs> world we live in that's the best part of the movie i believe that actually i believe that wholeheartedly I also want you to know that when I went to watch this movie, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I had no expectations. I was like, it's not going to be good. It'll be very mid. Maybe it'll look fun at times. Maybe the music will be cool. Maybe there'll be cool monsters. That was what I wanted. That's all I thought it was going to be. And, and, and I was yeah, like, it was so much worse. I, and, and I was like, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to take an edible before. So before I even went to the movie, oh, like for friends, hang out, we went to see it. So we took some edibles and just as like a let's make this fun because mm-hmm. it's not going to be good. And I couldn't, there was a few moments where there wasn't dialogue for like 10 minutes. And in those moments, I was having, I was having a great time. I was really able to get a little bit, just a little bit lost in the atmosphere. Well, high, Mm -hmm. which that'll happen to me watching like a fucking Germa stream. Yeah. So like, it's not that hard to do. I put the bar so low and then I gave them the greatest assist I could. And it, it was nothing. It It was so, I tried to not. I tried to not think it was the worst thing ever, and as it's unfolding before my eyes, I'm just watching this happen, just frowning. And then it's three hours and twelve minutes long. That's the other thing is that like I I've said it before on the on the podcast that like y'all I I physically can't handle three hour movies anymore. No, we went to see it at I, we went to see it at one twenty in the afternoon on a Tuesday, so the t- that way like we could be a little high, maybe laugh a little bit. No mm-hmm. one's in the theater, and mm-hmm. the tickets are like six bucks because mm-hmm. uh, Tuesday afternoon like no one's there. And, uh, yeah, still not worth six bucks. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, it, just, it sucks. I, I am actually. It wasn't even fun to do with friends. Like, that's the thing is, I'm sorry that it's it's one of those things where, like, I feel like if it was a little worse, it would be it would be a fun. Like, yeah, look how awful this fucking shit is. Holy hell. But like, it's, but it's like awful it was... in such a sad yeah, and like, exactly. ignorant way. Exactly. It's sad 
parentheses unfun parentheses i nothing had like hit me like in terms of like my mental state and my sobriety when the like for the first like half an hour of the movie and so i was like stone sober when he said i learned the language so much it just sounds like english to me now and then they never spoke in the native language again i and i just remember being like why did they do that they're still human characters, and he still does speak English, and there's still some humans there from the first movie. He could speak to them in English now and then. He could speak to his family in English, maybe. They're like a bilingual family. No, they don't do that. I, they don't incorporate I the language saying, they like made that, up. That, that would actually be like... A, That's not for the lowest better. common denominator. It would be better. People were mad when Shang-Chi had Chinese in it. God, that... People were mad when they went that. to China, and people were speaking in Chinese. People were like, wow, I can't believe they went to like Macau, and people were speaking in Mandarin. Why? Disgusting. So, like, clearly, Disney movies are for people who are the lowest common denominator, and the ones that they're pushing as, like, huge blockbuster, budget-breaking, like, Avatar 2-type movies, mm-hmm. this is this is what's, yeah. It's garbage, and it's garbage in a way that's not even fun to laugh at or support. I'm so sorry. That really? sucks, because it could have been. It sounds like I at like least it laughed been. watching Jungle Cruise. Exactly. Like, it's, it's, ugh. I, I did laugh watching Avatar, but... Only because people in the theater, because it was us, and then a whole bunch of, like, old people. Of course. And the old people would laugh at the jokes in the movie. <laughs> and then you would laugh at the old people. And if you laugh at a joke in a movie, that's Avatar 2. I was going to say, mm, come on, there. Come on. Yeah, no, there's comedies. There's exist. comedies. But <laughs> I, I've seen at least one funny movie. <laughs> if you laugh at a joke in Avatar 2, I, I couldn't help but start to cackle when it would happen. Because yeah. it would be the worst thing you've ever heard. And then someone in the audience would go like, oh, or something stupid would happen that made no sense. And someone in the audience would be like, oh, and then I would just laugh because that's come on. We're better than that as a society. We're better than this. We're better than Avatar 2. That's why I hate it. Here's the thing. Apparently, we're not. Apparently, we're not. And that's that's really the sad part. No, nah, it's just because like people who are over 40 will just never really develop media literacy in the same way people who grew up on the Internet will. Mm-hmm. because it's just genuinely like learning how to read all over again and old people don't be doing that because okay. you know it's like learning a language when you're old you don't you don't do it often and that's fine you're not expected to in many instances I was gonna say, I but feel when like it comes very, to like media literacy it's very valid it for is, most but i definitely met some yeah. media literate elders for sure but a lot the of them i'm sure majority. probably worked within media mm-hmm. or uh, were media yeah. adjacent or, or media were just adjacent. like yeah that's fair or just people who really tried to be understanding of the changes that were taking place in the world. <laughs> to be fair, some of them still have bad takes. Sometimes you'll sometimes you'll see people who are like, I understood what this movie was about, and also, and I'm like, no, please stop. <laughs> yeah. My uh that's that's my official stance for Avatar 2. Genuinely, I mean it. Don't watch the movie. It's not it's not worth watching. It's just bad. I'm so sorry. In a really in a way that just makes you sad. I'm I'm genuinely so sorry. I was glass onion. <laughs> Glass no, Onion was a I loved lot of it. fun. It was great. I loved it. I uh, really love the number of people who are like, I can't believe you made this stupid reactionary woke movie about Elon Musk buying Twitter when firstly, the movie was done ages ago. Like, the, the story was finished long before the man bought Twitter. The movie is about rich people, not Elon, and it's, wow, it just happened to line up on him. That's funny. It's you almost know? like rich people are actually just as predictable as dumb people. They just don't Correct. get marketed to. Correct. Mm-hmm. I uh, I'm reading through. I'm I'm like scri- I'm like s- <laughs> fucking hell. Wait, is- not rich people as dumb people. Rich people are dumb people. Yes, correct. But that yeah, rich people are just as dumb as poor people, but not, not as easy to market to. I people are so mad about like this movie, and I I don't understand why. I mean, I, like I'm, people are mad. At, okay, so cards on the table. I thought like, Glass Onion was great. I didn't think it was quite as good as the original, but it was really fucking good. It was an absolute romp to sit through. Like I wait, what's it based on? Glass Onion? Yeah, nothing. It's an original. Well, you said it's not as good as the original. Oh, sorry. The it's first a one. sequel. It's a sequel. My bad. Uh, Glass Onion to, se- to Knives Out. Oh, uh, has the same main character, which I do love. Uh, Michelle, even Michelle was like, "Why the fuck is it called Knives Out? A, <laughs> a Glass Onion and Knives Out mystery or whatever?" And I'm like, "Yeah, no, it, it fucking that's a stupid name." Uh. And I, was, I didn't even know it was called a Knives Out mystery. It, well, I was gonna say, it, and even to the point where um, I was reading a thing from Ryan Johnson where he's like, "I fought so hard to get them to not have that in the title because in his mind, it's it's supposed to be like 
almost like a dime, like a dime novel, like mystery series, essentially. Mm, that's Same, fun. It was super fun. I, as a concept, that's like, like that doing a little like a like a Poirot type guy. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like it's a concept that doesn't exist. Anybody else miss Dan? Yeah, no, he just a hundred percent died. You really that's did, pretty funny. And then he just like, which is funny because he doesn't know that he died, and he's definitely Looks still, like he like, didn't keep his knives out. I actually have no idea what Knives Out is. Um, yeah, it's uh, the original is a murder mystery, and it's really yeah, fun. I, I you just, hit the nail on the head when it's a Poirot type. Like, that's who he's supposed to be. Yeah, I've uh, heard a lot of people say it's really good. Oh, hey, I've, Dan's back. Oh, Dan's back. have I been gone this whole time? Oh, you yeah. have been gone oh, this whole time. It was, it, it was pretty funny. Fuck. Uh, uh, where you did said I... it's... Oh, I don't even remember. Where no, does, that's about where you died. You, like, cut off mid-word. Fuck. Um... I have no idea where I was. Jackson said something about, about um, Poro mysteries uh, not really being a thing. You don't get the Agatha Christie types. Yes, Agatha Christie, great, great pull. Exactly, same, same thing. And I thought this, 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 this was good. It was a good movie. Uh, I didn't think it was quite as maybe as clever as the first one. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't, I didn't feel as smart having gotten to the end and been like, oh shit, realizing it. Like the, I think okay, in my personal opinion, a good mystery movie or book, you the 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 audience should realize the answer like seconds before the lead does we then get makes you as the audience feel very smart and clever and it, then you also still get to see the payout because you if you find out too early then you're pissed about what the lead is doing and like why haven't they figured it out yeah if you find out too late you're just confused as to how they got to that point so in an ideal mystery you should find out the answer like seconds before and i think that knives out one did that extremely well glass onion was a lot less subtle and it became and I think it was interesting. I don't think it's a spoiler to say this. It became a lot less of a who done it and more of a how do we get them because the rich and can get away with it, which I thought was a much it's a very interesting thing. It just to me wasn't as good of a mystery like pull, if it makes sense. Mm. Um, I would have shot him, but I mean that I mean, <laughs> kind of not yeah, let's go <laughs> like but that, I mean, that wasn't not on the table, to be honest. I you don't I, get it. They're too big to prosecute. That's OK. We don't need to prosecute. I mean, <laughs> I, I want to go into like spoilers, but like I, it's yeah, I have no idea what the movie is actually about. It's still pretty new, right? When did this come out? Yeah, it came out well, September. It's very no, do you new. Think, do you, yeah, I think we're too. It did close not to come out in September. It hit the theaters then. It didn't hit um, public until December. It it dropped on Christmas Eve on Netflix. That's when <gasps> oh, many Netflix. people saw it. Okay, that makes sense. I uh, I will not go into spoilers, but I I really 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 like the movie. Uh, I really hope they continue this like series. I really enjoy. Uh, Daniel Craig's character a lot. Uh, every moment that he's on screen is a delight, frankly, mm-hmm. because I I got to be honest, his James Bond is fine. I, I like him as James Bond, whatever. But his him as uh, as Blanc is. You don't have to say anything about his James Bond, by the way. He hated his James Bond. Oh, that sucks. No, he hated the role. That's why so- he stone left. faces the entire thing. Oh, that's unfor- that, that makes me sad. I, 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 actors shouldn't hate the roles they're playing. That's that's no fun. I think they should. Keeps okay. them on their toes. So true. So true. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. And t- a huge all-star cast. Ton of little cameos and references. There's an Among Us scene. It's great. Yo! There's this an Among not- Us scene and two of the actors in it um, died. It's and that last, is their it, last yeah. role. It's an Among Us scene that's actually plot They relevant. died in Among Us? No, they died in real life. Like, in real life, they died after the filming of that scene. Before like the, right after the scene? Uh, probably. I wow. Oh my god! I did see an amazing. No, you'll appreciate this. So Carrie Fisher also died right after uh, Last Jedi. Yeah. Right after she played Among Us. And in I the really, Last Jedi. I really yeah. love somebody post put like in, in a critical scathing review. They're like, ah, oh, he's t- he, uh, uh, Ryan Johnson doesn't isn't self aware enough for this. He would never. And they were like, I want Blunk's next mystery to be finding a director who keeps killing his leads after their after their like best role or whatever so that he is the one that's remembered for each one and i'm like that is such a great that's such a great murder premise and also 100 percent ryan johnson is self-aware enough for that are you fucking kidding me i think it would be funny have I think you it would be seen very his funny. movies that's a great premise um, i actually don't know who ryan johnson is he is the director of um looper would be the one that i think a lot of people know um he did last jedi he did uh, holy shit is this gonna be another one of those like you're going to hit me with 10 and I'm going to have zero. Uh, yes. Because I know likely. of Looper. I know of Last Jedi. Uh, Brick, he did. Uh, what Holy else? shit. I'm going to. I didn't watch some of these, so I, I can't even say that all these are like, ooh, yeah, go go see it. But Looper, Brick, Last Jedi, Glass Onion, uh, Knives Out, Brothers Bloom, uh, and then a bunch of like C-class movies that you'll never have seen. Damn. Who was the actor that I'd never seen in, in a movie before? 
that was like no way oh shit mm. who was that it was very recent there, yeah it was it was it was someone else who was like involved in like big budget major blockbuster type movies that like i was at least aware of was it a uh, no i gotta say i didn't realize that brick was only a 45 budget that's insane for a movie that made back four million that's an insane budget sorry i'm now reading up brian johnson's filmography anyway love him genuinely in my opinion one of the best writer directors of our time he like, should make avatar 3 he should i would oh my, but here's the thing here's the thing he would make avatar 3 and he would, it would the entire movie would be about how the marines are actually for real bad and they should stop trying to come in and fix everything and people would get so mad at no, him about it that's what the first two movies are actually about though but no, without a white but, lead, without a white <laughs> Marine lead. Yeah, I, well, yeah. But that's the thing is like the whole the whole plot is that he was in the Marines, but he doesn't like him anymore. He's going to kill him. No, now. no, 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 no. But no. he still has all their cultures and ways. No, and, like, no, no, he's still no, no, doing no. the same stuff. As he would he would have burned that shit down because Ryan Johnson is uh, you, made, you made a joke earlier about like subvert, subverting expectations. And I think that his specialty is not necessarily subversion, but deconstruction, if that makes sense, uh, rather than simply saying, oh, hey, we're going to do something you didn't expect. It's we're going to do something that is kind of sort of what you expected, but in a way that you didn't expect. And it's going to say something about the original way you expected it to happen. He did that with somewhat actually even with Knives Out, the first one. Uh, but he did that like that's like everyone, everyone got pissed about him for for Last Jedi was that he like shown a mirror on the fandom and was like, look at look at how dumb your shit is. You're dumb. And then they mm-hmm. got mad at him for it because they don't know Star- what a good Star Wars movie Star Wars is. fans don't get deserve to be happy, <laughs> frankly, <laughs> like. I actually really love Looper. Looper is actually one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, I think it's really good. I uh, Noah, you, one of the bonus contents we did way, but way, way back that never got. I don't think it ever got fully released. I don't um, think. Yeah, it never got fully released because we probably um, for the best. Actually, never edited it. Well, I think is we Looper the one where you just gotta kill yourself over and over again? No, no, no. no what's no, the no. one where you kill yourself over and over? Sorry for the language, by the way, but what's the one where that's the plot of the movie? <laughs> That's it's the, real. They're on a cruise ship and they had to kill themselves over and over again. Isn't that the wasn't what? that the wasn't, But they oh, keep finding oh, out it's them and be the, like, holy shit, the it's Ryan me. Reynolds movie? Wasn't Ryan Reynolds in that? I don't know. I don't think so. Movie on cruise ship kill yourself. I think it's called over like over. it's called like Andy Samberg. It's, it's a one was word. It? Wasn't it Andy Samberg? Wasn't it rather? Not not, not No, Ryan no, Reynolds. that's a that's that a different one. one. That's that's Palm Springs. Isn't that also that's a wedding? Isn't that also funny fucking time Yes, killing yourself over and over? What? That's about literally like ending your own life uh, no, in I, their perspective because they just wake up again. This one is you're like you're not attacking. You're not harming yourself. You are killing someone. That's you. Wild. Uh, Over like it's, I think it's called like triangle or like. Oh, like a I think Bermuda triangle. Tri- movie? Triangle. Triangle is the only name that, I can. That looks like it. I can yeah. think of. No, that looks like it. God, that movie goes insane. I've never heard of this in my life. I got to be honest. Yeah, they just keep like they're like, oh, the crazy guy's attacking me. And then like. They like, you know, kill the crazy guy that's attacking you. And then like, turns out the crazy guy attacking you was actually you. And then you're like, that's crazy. And then you have and then like some like things, you know, would create something new would happen. And they'd be like, now I got to kill this group of people that's coming onto the ship. And now it turns out you're the crazy guy. And it just keeps going deeper and deeper and getting crazier and crazier. That sounds batshit insane. But that's like the starting premise of the movie. That's an absolutely it's insane. insane movie. I thought that was like a, I thought that was Looper. Like I thought Looper was a similar thing. No, not at all. Looper is about, yeah. Looper is a sci-fi story about, uh. You should watch Triangle. It's actually really I was gonna good. Say, I actually like kind of want to watch no, Triangle. You should really watch it. Like, the triangle sounds sick. Yeah. I haven't seen it in a long time. I remember watching it at a friend's house when I was in like high school. 2009, uh, 6.9 on IMDb, which means nothing to me anymore. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. 80% of Rotten Tomatoes. So. Yeah, go watch Triangle, everybody. It's, it's way Tubi better than Avatar free. 2. Where's it at? Tubi. Let's fucking go, Tubi. Yeah. Tubi, uh, honestly, high key, low key, a uh, goaded streaming site. I can Tubi be, goes I, insane. I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever used Tubi in my entire life. Okay, so here's the thing about Tubi is that like it really is um, great for horror movies. Mm, there are so many there. shit garbage horror movies that you can watch oh, for yeah. free, and so many like good ones and like weird ones. Like you could watch Suspiria on here. Like it was available. Tubi's a great bunch of if old you're like weird shit. If you're down to dredge through the mud, if you're from the mud a little bit, Tubi's amazing. Mm-hmm. That's where I first watched. Um, 
not the house is October built, but one of the one of the other like scary movie haunted house turns out it's actually not like as crazy or whatever. It wasn't like Hell House, movies. was it? No, I don't think it was because Hell House is like on Netflix and shit. Yeah, good point. Oh, sorry. I just the Dolphins almost threw an awful interception that would have literally just like ended the game. <laughs> it's a it's football playoffs right now. Speaking of things ending or beginning, <sighs> thanks for the lead in, Jackson. Skylar Thompson. Uh, it's like the fifth string quarterback, but he's living. Sausage Party is on Tubi. Uh, get fucked. <laughs> Sausage Party 2 is coming out. I So I had a moment with Sausage Party, right? Mm -hmm. Where like someone was like, oh, yeah, they're making Sausage Party 2. And I was like, oh, yeah, wasn't that like widely maligned as like a piece of shit movie? No, it was not actually. Yeah. Yeah. I, the exact opposite. I, 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 I had it kind of com like confused with Food Fight, but not actually because I know what Food Fight is. I thought that Sausage Party was like widely hated, but it turns out very popular. It's actually like quite beloved by many people. What? I think it's just like a, it's like just like a dumb adult comedy cartoon, right? It is. It is. And I, would, and I feel like that's that's got its time and place. Yeah, I think there are a couple parts of it that I would like. Look, like if, if I ran the zoo, right, if I was just like, hey, we're going to make Sausage Party 2. There's there's a lot of things that I would probably pull a lot of really like just full on racist like stereotypes that oh. I'm just not a fan of. And I get that, that that is, in fact, supposed to be the joke is like the Middle Eastern guy is a piece of non bread, like whatever. But that's not funny. Like, it's just not. Uh, besides that, I actually didn't hate the movie. I've seen Sausage Party. I saw it uh, drunk off my ass uh, with my that, in laws at one point. That's what I mean when there's a time and place for it. Yeah, that's I, the, you, that was the time and place for it. I think I think if it was if I was inebriated in any meaningful way, it's not that bad. Um, uh, it gets yeah, dumb exactly. and weird and like the ending is just stupid. But like it, it's fine. It's not a sit down with a glass of wine and take notes kind of no, film. It's it's a very, very, very stupid movie Um, that has a lot of problems. You ever um, take notes when you're watching a movie? I did when Frequently. I was in college. I used to a lot. I, 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 I like do, to do it that at least once a week. Too. I mean, yeah, you have to. More. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like doing it, though, even if I don't have to do it for any specific reason. I remember oh. movies better when I actually take notes because it makes me think about the movie. I wish I would have taken notes in Avatar 2. Then I would have had something to do. <laughs> Besides my, just frown at a screen for three hours. My problem is, is that my handwriting is is so bad and like genuinely illegible. I, I can't write notes while watching a movie. That's, I have to like pause, that's fair. And, pause and, and play it constantly, which it's, means that especially because you usually would watch a movie in the dark, I'm guessing. Yeah, like no one really yeah. watches a movie in like a well lit room normally. I mean, sometimes you do, but like it's hard to take notes in the dark, especially when your handwriting is already pretty bad. Yeah, it's, I can it's see that being an issue. Um, I'd love to, I would love to like. I, what I, one of the things that I like side projects, goal of life kind of things, I really want to do more like movie write up type stuff because I not necessarily because I think I have good takes on movies, but because I think that like like kind of what you said, Noah, it helps me think about the movie a lot more critically than I would otherwise. Mm -hmm. Like I, I can't just turn my brain off if I'm writing notes mm -hmm. and then uh, not for nothing. ADHD makes it extremely difficult for me personally to watch movies like insanely difficult. Like I have to take my medication or I will not be able to sit through a movie without checking my phone. Um. I have a lot of issues actually paying attention to movies when I'm at home. That's what uh, notes help me keep on track on the movie on that front. Because if think, I'm trying think, to watch a movie and write notes, then I cannot also be on my phone. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I got to be doing other stuff when I watch a movie. Like, I love to watch. And I think that's part of why I love watching, like, shitty reality TV so much. It's because it's way easier to put on an episode of 90 Day Fiance and then do, like, a million things at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's much harder to do that with, like, if I did that when I was watching Triangle, I would not know what was going on. I would be just as confused as the people who were in the precarious situation they're placed in. Yeah, I, I fucking. I think that movie has like a really good twist to it too, which is crazy because what I said about the movie isn't even the twist. Oh, I don't think I. You know, I've been seeing this movie in like a decade. I think I'm right uh, about uh, Triangle. It, like Triangle, it goes like I think it go. It just goes off the rails. Like it takes an already off the rails premise and is like, turns out that's the least crazy thing going on. You're like, what? I. I might have to watch this. It's good. I think I haven't watched it in a decade. <laughs> Maybe it's not even good. I think it's good. I'm kind of curious now if, to go watch it. I, and it I feel like I can't back. really give it a solid endorsement because I literally have not seen it since I was probably in 11th grade. Um, I mean, I'm going to watch it when we're done recording and I will. I think uh, it was good. <laughs> report back, Noah. Let us know. I'll, I'll put in a little thing in the episode now. Yeah, it turns out Triangle's just like cracked as hell. What a fun movie. I'm actually, having seen it, pretty sure I've seen the movie before, but I had basically no memory of it. It's just every single minute was like, oh yeah, I remember that. Oh yeah, I remember that. But you know, 
all in all, heavily recommend it, and you can watch it for free on Tubi, so there's no reason not to. Shockingly good from 2009, you get a bunch of fun, like, you know, uh, looping stuff. It's kind of neat to see, the, like, the storyline play out over and over and over again. Definitely recommend it. Jackson's memory did not disappoint. Thanks, future Noah, for that deep insight. <laughs> I really hope Noah is not just like, this is actually a nonsense movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're gonna forget to do that. God, I, hope this I know. I put good. a little marker down, and I'm gonna label the marker. Uh, I'm gonna. God, what's the, um? Let's see. Um, triangle. Don't down triangle. Thing. LMAO. There we go. I'll remember that. Also, um, I wanna. Oh shit! There's a shout out that I have to do this week. Um, we got time. It's all good. Let's see. I just gotta remember <laughs> what it is. <laughs> Because firstly, shout out to Hi for this keyboard. It's so loud, but it's so delightful to use. What was the... Oh, oh, because we were talking about... Um, Were we talking about Chick-fil-A last week? No. No, we were talking about Probably breakfast not. food. Breakfast food. Oh, okay. yeah, and you brought up your Chick-fil-A experience. Because yes. I was talking about my, my love of chicken for breakfast. Mm -hmm. And, okay, so Hi wanted to do a... A shout out to the um, abomination created from a Chick-fil-A breakfast sandwich, which was the spicy breakfast biscuit. Uh, an order of hash browns and an extra spicy chicken fillet. All right. Mm -hmm. So it was like a double decker with some hash browns in there. And then after getting home, there was some loose sausage in his fridge. So he made sausage gravy, fried two eggs, arranged the biscuit with a one biscuit down with a chicken, the other biscuit down with a chicken. And then you put eggs on top of that, cover it in gravy, which like. Not gonna not like, can I talk my shit again? Hmm? Can I talk my shit again? Um, I think. That sounds good, mm -hmm. but you let the breakfast sandwich get cold. That's well, true. that's why it was drowned in hot gravy. Um, mm, yeah, but the conclusion isn't... to this story is that High became one with the sofa for a few hours. That I can see, actually. That sounds really good. That does sound like something I would. I I, I do be cooking up, um, like just concoctions, and I love a, I love a good concoction. I'm not a big sausage gravy fan, though. Never really have been. Sausage gravy is the only kind of gravy I like. I feel like I I, I like almost every kind of gravy, but yeah, sausage gravy not really a. Not really the one for me. I enjoy sausage gravy, but it has to be like, I don't like Chick-fil-A had a sausage gravy, for example, and that was shit. It was a white gravy that was with, relatively flavorless that you would chop up a sausage only, right? patty and put it in. No, it wasn't Ew. even chicken sausage. Oh, you put the sausage in after the fact? Yeah, no, it was bad. It was a packaged powder that you mixed with hot water and it was ready to go. I think there's nothing wrong with some instant gravy. That, no, yeah, yeah. But it didn't taste I, I good. I think that a, a sawmill gravy, like a pepper gravy like that, is actually the, the, the best kind. Well, see, I love to, a pepper to gravy. Do with the powder. This gravy did not have any good pepper flavor either. It was literally just yeah. white. It was flour flavored, fl flour flavored gravy. Yeah, and that's not that's not how it's supposed to be. That's disrespectful to the term gravy. Incredible. I so. love pepper gravy, but which is strange because you would be like, oh, if you like sawmill gravy, you think you would probably like sausage gravy but i just something about it i'm like i'd rather have this on like some chicken fried steak and not on uh like a biscuit with sausage mm -hmm. my god i haven't had chicken fried straight steak in so long holy god, I love shit it. i love chicken fried steak and holy I love, shit i love when you get chicken fried chicken because like you don't have to say that you can yeah. just say fried chicken yeah, it's just fried chicken fam yeah but they don't they are like <laughs> they want you to know or the chicken fried chicken you don't have to tell me that it's the chicken is chicken fried um i'm gonna make a chicken of... gravy now I want to make a pepper gravy with chunks of chicken. You're not allowed to do that. <laughs> it's I'll tell law. Oh, shit. You'll tell. No, no. Yeah. T I'll telling. tell the gravy board. I'm telling on you to God. <laughs> uh, you hate when a, like an NFL player falls down and you have to watch him like snap their leg back in place in real time. Mm, yeah, I do Ooh, hate don't that. Don't love that. Yeah, I could have gone my whole life not knowing about that, actually. Yeah, you can tell he's having an awful time with it. <laughs> I He's all right now. I don't think I have the words to express how much I hate that concept. I mean, it's what you do when someone dislocates like a shoulder or like a pops something out of a socket. Yeah, but I don't want to go back in there somehow. I don't want to watch that on like any context. That's true. They usually cut from it, but they didn't right now. They wanted you to see what you'd done. I didn't do it. He actually kind of did it to himself. You did it by supporting the system in which uh, it exists or something. So true here on methstreams.site. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was gonna. Oh, I was gonna talk about baseball. Baseball's back. Oh yeah, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I'm gonna do it anyway. It's back. We're bad. Uh, it, the the first season is already over. It 
It's been really fun, you guys. I missed it so much. I got um in my Secret Santa this year, I got a baseball bomber jacket and hat for the team that I uh, support for the Philly guys. It's so good. It's so good. And I don't own I this is now the only bomber jacket that I own. I do not own any others. So that's very exciting. So where do you like watch a baseball game? At baseball.com. Thank you for asking. Uh the problem is that right now their site kind of blows. Uh they did a bunch of changes and they clearly did not do enough testing between uh between se- between like the games. So things mm-hmm. are broken. At this time exactly, like at this time exactly there's nothing going um because we are on a Sunday and we are in between seasons until I think I think we're doing a week on a week off. That's uh, fair. I mean, I feel like Sunday is a uh, you know, there's usually a sport people play a real day. sport. Yeah, not a real one, but there's like one that kind of. Yeah, I, I guess it, it's not insulting to say baseball is not a real sport. No, I guess. it's absolutely because it's, it's literally not 100 like, percent literally not a real sport. But normally that comes off as like, you know, as reductive. No, and I appreciate that. I appreciate it's you. Tra- like Similar genuinely. energy to, uh, you know, wrestling's fake, right? Or, or oh, yes, I love Wait. sports ball. Wrestling's oh man, I had the opportunity. I'm no, so sad Jackson, I can't no. go. Roman Reigns example. isn't the tribal chief. No, he's the I, tribal chief. Don't worry, don't, don't worry. <laughs> I'm so sad. I had an opportunity to go to uh, WWE Raw in February, and I can't go. I'm I, very sorry for you. I'm, I'm so up in the air about going this weekend. I it's an in eerie. You gotta, you gotta, dude. If you can, you have to. It's true, but it's it's a house show. It's not like Monday Night Raw. Hmm, no, this would still. be. I'm pretty that sure was that, in Pittsburgh like last week, though. This is yeah. This is the Monday. This is the Monday Night Raw. I yeah, that'd be fun. I really wanted to go, and there's just no way to like make the timing hat work out because of work and money and uh like home responsibilities. But God, that's very fair. Because um, I feel like call me crazy. I don't think that WWE should come before the your family. Uh, you know what? Uh, I don't know job. that I agree with that. Oh, that's fair. I think I, I mean Roman Reigns is the tribal chief. There's nothing. There's nothing is more important than what goes on in that ring. That's so true. Actually, I think Roman Reigns is on SmackDown anyway. <laughs> I'm not. I, don't quote me on that, but I think I think so. What was I gonna say? Uh, oh, to answer your question, Jackson, is that right now there's no way to like watch the game. It's almost like watching. I the, honestly, what I would equate it to is you know in like the 90s and well okay more like the 60s how how they had those like like there would be somebody doing a radio like, oh, like, like a telegram like, like a play-by-play of the of the uh of the game as it was going on right i kind of equate it to that because you can't there's no game to watch it's you're watching text on a screen go by and it says like so and so throws so and so hits or misses or whatever it shows the current stats shows the current game i wish i had a screenshot of like earlier this season it's a great game to play passively and have in the background. And to be honest, if not for the fact that I joined the community and like I'm not super involved, but like involved enough to like interact with people, I would not have stuck around. But the community that surrounds it is so, so good. It's they're all very good people. They're all like it's, it's in my opinion, like a really well moderated and well, well handled community as well, even down to like there's the main discord. And then a lot of the teams, the pies included now have their own like side cord. Mm-hmm. that technically is is like you know no rules whatever but it's the moderation team is really really well done on, across the board across everything and it's just I'm, it's really good that's kind of the secret about sports though that's and you know what i like a lot of times you're not really doing it to watch the game yeah and i think that i didn't re- i didn't understand that i think until like back back when baseball was around the first time around yeah which is fine. I mean, everyone has their way that they like realize that kind of thing. But like, that's that's why I've always had gripe with the uh, go sports ball people because they're they're not. You're not even trying you to engage do, with, with the with the. All medium. you gotta do is sit down and participate. Exactly. You don't even have to. But if you like tell somebody like, man, that was like a big drive. Someone will be like, yeah, it was cool. He's done that 11 times this season. You're yeah. like, oh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's right. And if you listen to the commentary, you'll hear like the, the, they're saying the stuff. Yeah. But a lot of times you put it on. Like I was watching the Saturday games because it's the playoffs with some of my friends yesterday and we just like had it on in the background pretty quiet and we were just like talking and hanging out yeah and i think and then you like look over and you're like oh that's crazy herbie fully loaded dropping the dropping the buck yet again and i feel like that's exactly <laughs> they lost really bad Oof. they didn't lose bad but they they were up 27 to 0 and they lost 30 to 31 Oof. s no good that's yeah that's not ideal yeah i don't care about the team but it's a and there's some good storylines too the storylines are one of the best like some of the best parts they really are and that's i think the thing that uh, i was we were playing um we were playing a drinking game the other day and it was like oh you know name things and whoever stops being able to name things take a drink whatever and me thinking i'm very clever and smart i'm like baseball teams because i knew only one other person was actually going to be able to like really list them and like I f- that's how i found out that michelle actually like not only listens but like really enjoys hearing the stories she has no no investment in the game at all none not even a little yeah but she enjoys hearing 
I mean, yes, obviously, because whatever, married, excited about it. But like, it's the fun of hearing the story from the outside and not having to necessarily be the like mainline person on it. Yeah. And that's like there's some really cool like story. I mean, even this year in like the NFL, there's some stories. And like, that's one of those where with something like baseball, you get a little bit more of a you can kind of pick and choose and have more fun stories. And it's more literal. Like, it's more literal run. story, like plot story. Yeah. And like but with like even like football this year, there's been some good stories There's a guy like Geno Smith is his name. He was supposed to be this like big deal quarterback in a year when a lot of quarterbacks were kind of garbage. He was like maybe going to be a gem in the rough, but like ended up not going at all when he thought he would. He thought maybe he'd get like early, early pick, didn't get picked for a long ass time. And then uh, just got like drafted and kind of like thrown to the side, played a few games, didn't do that great. And they just like tossed him aside for a while. And then the Seahawks made like a huge trade of Russell Wilson, who's like a really big deal quarterback. They basically gave him to the Broncos for a shitload of money and picks. Mm-hmm. And then they let Geno Smith kind of like run the ball for a while. And it turns out he was like really good this year. That's when cool. he needed to be. And like, yeah, he had this whole like little thing where he he had like a, a, a speech. He was giving like an interview after one of the games when he like popped off against his old team that got rid of him. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you know, they wrote me off, but I didn't write back. And that was like his whole that's like a, arc. That's a good that's a good line. That, it's a cold that's ass a cold line. Fucking line. I love mm-hmm. that. <laughs> they wrote me off, but I ain't right back. That's really, really good. <laughs> I uh yeah. They, he's out. He didn't make it through the playoffs, Oof. but you know. But still. But he lo- the, the team he lost from the playoffs is the San Francisco 49ers, who are an insane team all around. Mm-hmm. But their quarterback right now, because of like injuries, is the dead last pick in the draft. Oof. His name is Brock Purdy. And they were like, all right, Brock, get in there, I guess. <laughs> Have fun starting against Tom Brady. Because no is one's Tom ever... Brady still playing the game. Because he's really fucking good. Yeah. Um, Has no, he been doing it for like... like... Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. I know. He's just really fucking good. He's literally in the only playoffs. peaked recently. And I don't want to talk about it, but he's probably going to fucking beat Dallas. Because, I don't know, like it's just... <sighs> sucks. I fucking hate that guy. And you can't bet against him. On, on every regards, he should not win the playoff game today. And yet... He should lose to the Cowboys. But I cannot say that because I don't want to manifest the opposite. Yeah. The dude is such a fucking hater that he will willpower his way to winning things just because you said he couldn't. I fucking hate that. Uh, Is he also a dick Um, or do we just hate him because he's good? Just to be clear. He's a little bit of a dick, but like, I mean, he's a fucking pro football player and he's been doing nothing but this his whole life. Uh, Yeah. I mean, you can only only ask for so much. Yeah. I don't I don't don't have high expectations for him. Um, Yeah. He's better than like Deshaun Watson, but that's a that's saying nothing. Yeah. 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 who is the, you know, the sexual assaulter <laughs> of many, many people that the Browns gave up a good quarterback and a lot of money for in the midst of after all these allegations had come to light. They were like, we still want him. Yeah, he mm. is. Don't love that. Yeah. Cleveland Browns. And then uh, anyway, but the Brock Purdy dude, they're like, yeah, you're starting for your first game ever against Tom Brady. And that's like no first game rookie has ever beaten Tom Brady in a football game Mm -hmm. except for that day. Let's go. With the dead last pick in the draft. (laughs) Badass. Brock Purdy. And then he's just not lost yet. I love that. Which is crazy because, again, the whole team is stacked as hell. So it's not like a miracle, Mm -hmm. but it's like very impressive from the someone who... You know, if Geno Smith was written off, I don't know that Brock Purdy was in the book. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a fun story. This is it's a really fun story. Like no, that's great. And they are fun. That's rad. And you know what's not a fun story? <laughs> Avatar there the Rain of Water. There it is. Fucking. <laughs> I, I really. Somehow I, they spent a decade on it and then it's less. It's it, it's a shittier story to try and tell to someone than about a guy named Brock. Oof. But those are the real superheroes, you know? Yeah. So. So. What are you going to do? I, I'm, I'm not a San Francisco 49ers fan, mm-hmm. but I will always have a soft spot for them because of... I, and I told this Noah this story, but I'm, I'm just going to tell it for the podcast because it's actually a really funny story. I'm so excited to hear it again. I had a I had a co-worker one time. His name was Domingo. And he was from the Virgin Islands. Um, awesome guy. You know, he was just like an older dude. Real chill. Living his life on island time for sure. Uh, this was in Waco, and he was just like a real chill dude, and he, he he liked football, he liked the 49ers a lot, I knew that much about him, and he was, one day he was talking to me, he was like, Jackson, you like, uh, I'm not gonna do my impression of him, because I, it's just not as good as it used to be, and it makes me feel sad to try and do it, because I just, I can't, I can't do it. Um, he had a really fun accent, though. Um, anyway, Domingo was like, 
hey Jackson, you like uh you like superhero movies? And I was or he's like, You like the Marvel movies? And I was like, nah, Domingo, I don't I don't really watch that kind of stuff. It's not not my thing. He's like, me neither. You like you you don't like superheroes? And I was like, nah, not really. He's like, well, you know, these are the real superheroes. He pulls out his phone. And I'm like, oh God, is he gonna show me like the Marines or the cops or the firefighters? And I'm like, I don't want to deal with this right mm-hmm. now. Turns his phone around. It's just a picture. This is his background. It's a picture of the San Francisco 49ers <laughs> roster. <laughs> And I was like, you know what, Domingo? You're all right. I guess so. That's real good. That's really, really <laughs> I, like, funny. I would not have expected. It's so good. These are the real superheroes. And because it was like 2018, I was like, oh, God, it's going to be like, he's going to have like a Blue Lives Matter thing on his phone or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, just the 49ers. God, that's good. <laughs> I don't know. Like, that's so funny to me. No, that's gold. Because <laughs> like, <laughs> Okay, I got you. Like, I'm not going to argue with you. And so, like, even though I don't necessarily like the team, I will never dislike the team. I have. I, I get that, actually. You don't have to you don't have to like them. You just have to acknowledge that they're they're still there. I just have to like I, I think I, I would like if they're the only team left in the playoffs because the Dolphins are not in the playoffs. Mm. I, I'll, th- that's who I'm going to root for then. Yeah, because like, yeah. Also, their regular quarterback, not the not the guy that's in right now, is just like just like a male model. Excuse? He's just like really like traditionally attractive. And it's really funny to me because like a lot of quarterbacks aren't necessarily there, which is they're just fine. Big they're guys. Just, just big. Not not even that big, but they're just guys. You know, this is Jimmy Garoppolo, who if he couldn't play football ever again, I think he could just like. Just like, I don't know, be on like a magazine Damn. cover forever. Yeah, he's got it. Honestly. Look at that man. Like, it, out of uniform, this is just what he looks like. This is just like him. No, man, yeah, looks that's like, a model. man looks like he, yeah. no, man looks like he belongs yeah. in a fucking CW is what he looks like. That's, dude, that's so true. If Jimmy Garofalo, like, because he's injured right now, man. he can never play football again. He could be on the next season of Arrow. He 100 He could be a hot teacher on Riverdale that the students want to have sex with and fans think that's okay and normal. C- correct. Man, I don't know what about it is, is giving... No, s- you're right. Is, I, he <laughs> could be on the CW. You know what it is? He's it, CW I think, hot. I think, it's, I think it's the white t-shirt and denim jacket. Genuinely. I think that that is not helping his case. And the chin cleft. Yeah, he's he's CW <laughs> he's hot big, for sure. He's big time CW hot, which is fine. Listen, nothing wrong Somebody's with that. Somebody's gotta be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's still like, you're still hot. Like, yeah. Don't get mad. Yeah. Don't be don't be mad. Why are you mad right now? Oh, Lord. I, mean, I feel like that's there's not enough NFL players that go on to be like just like actors, you know, there's some here and there. But I feel like I was I mean, there's no reason to say I feel like the WWE does it a lot more because like that's obvious. Mm. Like they already are actors. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Oh, Sorry, Noah. fuck. Speaking <laughs> of. Uh, no, don't be upset. It's OK. It's OK. No, I lied, Dan. They're not actors. <laughs> They're real. They're doing it. I'm sorry. Oh, shit. Uh, no, fucking that reminds me. Fucking um, Glass Onion has goddamn Dave Batista in Roman it. Reigns. Oh yeah, Batista. Dave Batista, and he's great. He's so good. Yeah, he plays an Andrew Tate type, and it's very it's amazing. funny. Amazing. Dave Batista is great because not only was he like an amazing professional wrestler, mm. like a very talented in ring and on the mic, he's also like been in a lot of like movies that are like he's kind of doing like Dave Batista things. Mm-hmm. But I, I feel like the more roles he gets, the more people will kind of start to realize, like, holy shit, this is just like a really like nice guy. Mm-hmm. I saw a clip of him. Who's just about... also really beefy and tattooed. I, I saw a clip of him talking about one of his tattoos that he had to get covered up because he's like, this used to yeah. be this used to be like a group that With Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, I, I don't know the full. I didn't hear, get like who it was. But so please, if you he have used to it. be on a team, it, like he used to be in like the training team for Manny Pacquiao, who's like a professional fighter who mm-hmm. has recently been like, you know what? I hate more than anything on the planet. <laughs> Gay people. Yep. And then everyone's like, what? What? <laughs> And so he got it covered up because he's like, I can't, I, I don't want to be that, part, I don't want to be part of that anymore. And I'm like, you know well, what? Because Dave Batista is, yeah, fuck you know. yeah, Dave. Well, because Dave Batista is, has the two moms. I did not know that. Yeah, he said, well, he says it in the video. Ah, that's why. Um, and also, and maybe this is, maybe you guys are going to tell me I'm wrong. Just got the Batista bomb too. I feel like John Cena is also really, really a a really solid actor, and b for, by all accounts the actual nicest person. Unless you guys, I've heard really good things about him. I have heard, like, I, I've heard that he's like a fun guy, team player. Doesn't he have the world record good to for work with. Um, Make a Wish fulfillments? Yeah, like, by, by a, a margin long shot, like mm-hmm. by like hundreds. John, John Cena genuinely, like weekly for the last over a decade, has been fulfilling like kids Make a Wish that's, wishes. That's badass. That's amazing. That's, I think that's like that's, that's cool. one of the most awesome things you can do if you're like a childhood hero. A hundred percent. Which like W? The, how, no. how many does fucking Hulk Hogan have? <laughs> Uh, okay four am i wrong but i fuck the clansman's kids <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, fuck Hulk Hogan, right like i don't know I, yeah no he's a piece of okay, shit okay good thank god mm-hmm. no, he wasn't even that great 
he also just like lies about everything like <laughs> easily disprovable lies like uh claiming to be places that literally it was impossible for him to be he once said that due to time zone differences he wrestled 400 days a year at his peak dude i love when he like which I like as a turn when of phrase you get the whole hogan effect but when he since he meant it insane yeah <laughs> well and i i love the hulk hogan effect of like everyone being like man this guy's like a, he's an iconic like showman within the ring no i can't believe he's weird in real life right <laughs> yeah dude's, dude has been lying better than most anyone on the planet for 60 years yeah it's of course he does that because he started doing it before it was like the huge industry that it is to the, like you know it was big and it was but it was more regionalized he started doing it way back when can i drop mm -hmm. a, a maybe a maybe hot take sure wrestlers are quite literally just buff theater kids yeah oh, we know yeah. that's why that's why <laughs> wrestling's great no i am but i'm saying like so why would you ever expect them to be normal have you not met theater kids some but, of them you know, are it's, normal, that's, though, it's different it's, because theater kids will get beat up by wrestlers. Ah, so um, yeah, get dunked on. Because wrestlers go wrestlers go hard, but they're also theater kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I also like I don't know. I think WWE is actually pretty cool. Rob's yeah. got me like not fully on board, but I, I'm fairly WWE pilled. I think it's a it's a fine way to spend a couple hours on a Monday night. I, I agree. I, that I'll never get again. I very much Sorry. love Just, that um, Stone Cold's podcast keeps coming across my TikTok. And it's just talking about, like, the greatest moments of wrestling. And Stone Cold is so fucking iconic. Right? God, I love Stone Cold Steve Austin. Especially because, like, Stone Cold Steve Austin is actually a leftist icon. Mm-hmm. And that's hilarious. Stone Cold. Yeah. I, 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 I like that. Okay, so I, I, I listen to a, a small number of, of movie podcasts still because mm -hmm. i that's all i have time for um and one of the things that they they keep ending up getting sent because their audience hates them is like a lot of old like old hulk hogan and like old like any like the big one is hulk hogan and then um macho man randy savage like mm -hmm. anything they uh acted in essentially mm -hmm. and his take the take is essentially that i think it, i think it is hulk hogan is who i'm thinking is who they specifically said this about but that hulk hogan like can't be a like you can have a negative portrayal of Hulk Hogan in a Hulk Hogan movie like that's just it just doesn't exist no yeah and that's part of the thing like because WWE does their own movies sometimes mm. and they're like really anal about like what their actors are like what their performers are allowed to do in movies that's super interesting that's why it was such a big deal when Hulk Hogan went to like the WCW out of like the WWF mm. he went to the WCW and was like e basically evil Hulk Hogan with the no New World Order that's because like he'd spent decades with that unsullied baby face perfect, image yeah. of like he is like the hero, he's the kids champion, mm -hmm. to like wearing like a black bandana and beating people up. That's rad, first for of all. For real. Yeah, it, that's, that was like the whole thing with like the New World Order that people were like, what? That's rad, first of all. Um, yeah. Wrestling is kind of cool. Rest, um, wrestling is one of those things where I feel like if I... Okay, I feel like I feel about wrestling that I the way I feel like Michelle feels about baseball, which is that like I am so down to just sit and hear stories and I cannot bring myself to actually watch it. Yeah, you can tell me about it, but that's where I want to. Yeah. That's how I want it to that's stay. How, I want to experience it vicariously through other people. Yeah, that's 100 percent fair. But about Hulk Hogan I, I and think... like his, his older like all those old movies is that like I don't think of Hulk Hogan as like necessarily a good actor or like most, yeah, I would argue like mm -hmm. probably 90 percent of wrestlers even the ones that do make it out into like movies aren't that great at actors. The rock is absolutely okay at best. Like, I think the rock is good for what he's doing, but he's just but playing, he does it. He doesn't want to do anything. Else. He's just playing himself again and again and yeah. again. And that's, and he wants that. If that's what he wants, it's fine. But like, then I look at something like the, the two that I'm looking at specifically in this, in this, where I'm leading with this is like Dave Batista and John Cena. And like, dude, Batista's a great yeah. actor. I, yeah, but he's a very talented really actor good. with a lot of depth of character. Yeah. And it's almost like he's a normal, like human being, quite intelligent person yeah. and who is doing this. It's almost like the uh, wrestlers are people. crazy. It, it, no, it's almost like the WWE. Like, uh, it's almost like, no, it, it's almost call me crazy. Mm -hmm. But I think that maybe in the 80s, the wrestlers were doing more things to their body that made it so that the rest of them wasn't working quite right damn that's cool oh, it could it could have been anything that's crazy no there I, could I, have been I don't many think legal battles about this i don't think it's true i think it's wrong so yeah i, I don't think that the steroid testing has actually helped the industry at no, all not at all and i don't think that people like dave batista having fully functioning brains at their age yeah, is, exactly. a, is a benefit exactly but like yeah if you look at like dave batista like he's got some silly roles here and there sure, um 
but good. but if you look at like yeah he's very Same good with he's Cena commits. is where I was, it, it like Dude, you watch John Cena like he was in the second Suicide Squad movie was that was the great. one that was considered good, he was not only great, he was the breakout star to the degree that he got his own and series by all accounts, for the Peace character. Martin, yeah. Peacemaker is great. I've heard nothing bad about and it. And it wasn't like they were making Suicide Squad, like the second one, as a that's called the same thing as the first as one. They were, and they were like, oh, and we got this Peacemaker show that we want to, we need to do. No. They were like, we like you so much while we're making this movie. We're like, let's see if we can't. They're like, not only do we love this, people are going to love this. Let's make it. You get a show, buddy. Yeah. Like, dude, I, I love seeing it. I love seeing good people get like. Or, <laughs> it's almost like. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like not being the liver king, not having 70 liver kings <laughs> in a locker room has somehow made people who are part of it able to perform better on a theatrical level. Nah, 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 or nah. something. Yeah, but then you wouldn't get. um. The announcer table, hell in a cell. So no, you probably still would. Ah, I hope yeah, so, dude. Could. That was Mick Foley. That guy's fucking. He's like that. <laughs> yeah, Mick Foley's no. just dude, different. There, there are like three yeah. fucking, three fucking clips I've ever seen of like actual wrestlers, and it's, it's Undertaker throwing mankind off of the fucking table or off of the. With fucking... God as my witness, he's broken in half. Yeah, that one. Uh, it's. I love um, that because. Uh, do you know the story about that at all? That I don't. Wasn't supposed to happen. God, you got to look it up. Do you know what happened afterwards? Mm-hmm. Please do tell. I know. I know. We're, I know we're coming up on time, but go on. He did it again. <laughs> no. Yeah, Mick Foley, after being thrown and concussed off of a twenty-six foot cage or nineteen foot, whatever it was, foot cage onto an announcer table, after being peeled off of it and taken down the aisle on a stretcher, he got up off the stretcher, <laughs> pushed him oh and tried to stop him away, and climbed back up the fucking cell to get choke slammed by the Undertaker <laughs> through the cell and onto the mat again before rolling around on tax for a little while. And then when he was like unconscious, they were gonna put him on a stretcher, and he was like, "Hey man, wasn't I on a?" Wh-? First of all, he asked, "Was I on a stretcher earlier tonight?" <laughs> And they were Holy like, shit. yeah, you were on a stretcher earlier. And he was like, all right, I can't be on a stretcher twice. And then got up and walked out. <laughs> <laughs> and they had to like pull his teeth out of his head. Yeah. They were like, it went they were in the wrong lip. spot, but they were embedded. Mm-hmm. And That's also he was, had so many thumbtacks stuck in his body. Dude, it, God, that is that is the most incredible feat known to man like, that's the that's emotional amazing. journey the undertaker went through where he's like i think i just killed that man oh yeah. no yeah. i just killed my friend and then he gets up off of the stretcher and he's like no i'm coming back up <laughs> yeah imagine, <laughs> imagine the undertaker and you're like oh god i can't believe i did that i hope he ends up okay and he climbs back up he's like I'm you're not, not done, done yet bitch and you're like you're like Nicholas, Nicholas, we are like, <laughs> it's don't okay, do dude. this. You don't have to. And he and he's like, okay, choke slam me. Don't choke slam him again. <laughs> the Undertaker's like, well, I guess I'm the fucking Undertaker. Uh, listen, yeah, you got to do it. Listen, it's, the I show must I go on. Yeah, if you're the Undertaker, you can't be like, I'm not undertaking this guy. I'm not cold enough. It's that he undertook. <laughs> it's that. It's really funny. It's that, and it's Sting taking off his own mask. That's. Like the only wrestling things that I can like. <laughs> That's a good one too. And, then and there's the the Vince McMahon. It was me, Austin. It was me. It was me all along. <laughs> Which is that was uh, funny because it was really bad because the when he revealed that it was him all along, he revealed that it was him who was kidnapping his daughter and trying to force her to get married. <laughs> That's what that reveal was saying, and then everyone was like, "What?" It's that, and then the other one is the um. The uh, I think it was Randy Savage with the best wrestler in the West, East, South, and North, and pointing the wrong direction every time. That sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some, there's some there's some good ones. Um, wrestling's wild. I I wish that it was something that I'd gotten into younger. I don't think I have the energy to keep up with it now, but I I really do enjoy hearing it through you guys. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually pretty fun. There's some cool units. There's a uh, yeah, it's just it's a good time. But you know, it's not a good time. Mm-hmm. Is it Avatar too? And it's Avatar 2. But you know what is a good time? Knives Out Glass Onion. Go watch it. That's true. It's real. It's really good. It's very fun. Go watch it. It's available on streaming services, too. It is. It's on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Go watch it. It's, it's just on Netflix. I think technically Avatar The Way of Water is on Disney+. Plus. Oh, yeah. Well, don't watch don't it. Don't watch it. Yeah, don't, don't, don't do, do that. that. Watch Knives Out twice instead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Honestly. Watch the original and the sequel, and you'll probably have spent the same amount of time. And had a lot better time, I watched. promise. I, get, I will... Uh, that is a that is a off the air promise. If you go watch Knives Out one and two, you will have more fun than watching Shape of Water. 
Okay, not Shape of Water. Uh, whatever. The Way of what? Water. Yeah, shape of Water, shape is, of water is like actually like a pretty I've good movie. Shape of Water is actually really good. I've never, I never got to yeah, see it. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a well done story. You know, it's not the best Guillermo del Toro movie because everyone knows that's Pacific Rim. Of course, of course. God, I fucking love Pacific Rim. I, I wish love I didn't. Pacific Rim. No, it's. It... I, I, I wish that I didn't look at Guillermo del Toro's body of work and say, you know, what's the best. You know, what's the most exciting movie he's done. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the robot one. Yeah. but it, that's <laughs> that's what I think. And I I would stand by it. Did any of you if, see if, um, the new po- Pinocchio from him? By the way, Nino no, but I guess it. really. I'm willing to bet it's not as good as Pacific Rim. It looked fucking hog wild, like visually. I've heard it was really good, but again, yeah, of course, no, it's not. I just really like Pacific Rim, <laughs> dude. That's because Pacific Rim is everything. I've... It's really good. It's so it is, fun. It it's is, a good kaiju. It movie. is exactly what it, it promises. Is what it is. You walk into that movie and it promises, I am going to let you watch giant robots punch the shit out of, go- out of definitely not just Godzilla. Yeah, they're like, are you not smart enough for Evangelion or do you just not want to deal with that? Yeah, exactly. It's, that's exactly what it, it is. That's fair. You don't have to. No, you don't have to want to deal with that all the time. You, frankly, I don't. I don't. Avatar 2 could yeah. never. Sometimes, sometimes you can deal with Evangelion. You want to watch two hours of the same shit, but without the sadness. You can watch some Pacific Rim. They cancel the apocalypse. Yeah, dude. Cancelled. They don't cancel it in Evangelion. Spoilers, I suppose. Well, I guess there's like 18 different endings. But... (laughs) Which is why it's a little heady sometimes. Unlike Pacific Rim, which does not ask anything of you, the viewer. I don't want to watch Pacific Rim. Yeah, I remember people when it came out, they were like, why didn't they use the chainsaw sword earlier? Shut Shut up! up. Weren't you like, oh! When it happened? Yeah, don't be a nerd. Don't be mad. Yeah. It's the same people who are like, why don't they just crash ships through Star Wars ships all the time? No, shut up, because it was badass at one time. Fuck off. Like, who cares? Don't be that guy. Let them have the cool thing. Well, also, because mo- crashing ships into ships is a colossal loss of life every time. Correct. You know how hard it is to maintain any kind of, like, hull integrity once or, you... Or morale, for that matter. ...fucked yourself into the vacuum of space. I fucking hate everything. You're going to vacuum seal yourself in a little room and you can't leave it forever because it's the only way you'll ever get oxygen again. Fucking Star Wars is stupid. But you know it's not stupid. <laughs> Pacific, Pacific Rim. Rim. No, wait, no, hold on. <laughs> no, Pacific Rim is also stupid, but it's very good. That's true. That's true. I think I actually saw Pacific Rim with you, Noah, for the first time. I was asleep. I did not see it. Uh, with Jeff oh. for the first time. Have you never seen Pacific Rim, Noah? I have not yet. No. Okay. Well, it's pretty good. All right, we need to end the podcast and go watch Pacific Rim, Noah. That's it. We're out of here. No, Noah's got to watch Triangle. Yeah, I'm watching Triangle. We'll do Much back more to back. Important. Yeah, we'll let you. Noah will let you know if Triangle was good or if I was kind of young, like not knowing what I was talking about. Which I, I I'm not claiming anything here. Again, I I I think it was good. <laughs> you know, fuck it, it's good. 